Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Archon in this episode of CUDA Crash Course. We're going to be taking a look at our convolution example that we looked at last time, uh, which was a 1D convolution. And we said that it was a very naive implementation. And we're going to look at how we can speed this up by actually quite a bit, by using something we haven't discussed before, which is constant memory. So within the actual memory system of the GPU, we have a number of uh, different types of memory. So there's things like um, there's different kinds of caches, so there's texture caches, there's constant caches, there's your regular data cache, there's an instruction cache, and likewise uh, with memory there's also a constant memory. So constant memory allows us to have a space where we put in values that aren't going to change during execution of a kernel, and uh, with the case of uh, uh, constant memory, uh, constant memory when loaded in or when uh, when you know you try to access one of those var uh, variables, it'll get put into the constant cache. So what ends up happening is that you'll only pay this cost once for the entire, uh, uh, you know, whenever a kernel uh, is running, you'll say, you know, access some constant array or something that's, you know, small enough that it'll fit inside of the constant cache or in constant memory. And then that's the only time you miss, right? So every uh, subsequent time you try to access you know, that array, that array will already be loaded into the constant cache. So a natural way to, you know, think about this or where this will apply for a 1D convolution example is with the, uh, uh, with the convolutional mask. So the convolutional mask that we were looking at was only seven elements. It could have been a bit bigger, but in this case, we're just considering one that's seven elements. Maybe it'd be 20 elements or 40 elements. Regardless, it's small enough where it'll fit inside of the constant cache. So uh, in this case, you know, something like the normal array, which is 2 to the 20 elements, that's certainly, you know, it's very, very big. That's not going to fit inside the constant cache. So we're limited to some extent of what we can actually put in there or put inside of constant memory and still get that locality. So we'll go ahead and look at uh, our example in 1D constant memory. And we'll go ahead and let's go ahead and remove the binary that's in here. And we'll open up the example, convolution.cu. So there's not much changed here other than where we're storing the mask. Now, in order to put something in constant memory, we can allocate it by using this prefix underscore underscore constant, All right? And so we've moved out the mask length now. So instead of being in the main function, we have it as a defined up top, just so we can use it here as well and also access it within our uh, convolution kernel as well. So here, right? So we're saying that I want some part of constant memory. I want enough space for an array of integers that's uh, seven entries, right? So seven ints uh, in an array, and I want to call it mask. Now to actually copy into this, uh, you, you know, you may be wondering, well, normally when I do CUDA mem copy, I'll call CUDA malloc uh, ahead of time, and that's how we'll get the pointer to constant memory. So this will bring up a new API call that we haven't looked at before, which is called CUDA mem copy to symbol, right? So we have a symbol mask uh, that is this identifier up here uh, for constant memory. And so when we call CUDA mem copy to symbol, we don't need to have the actual pointer. We can go ahead and access it based upon whatever the symbol name is. In this case, it's mask. We could do it with CUDA mem copy, but then we'd have to have two API calls. So one API call would get the uh, pointer to constant memory. Uh, so we'd have one API call that says, hey, here's, uh, here's a symbol. I need to get the address of the symbol. And then we could call CUDA malloc. Uh, or rather could a mem copy based upon you know however many bytes we want to load in. In this in this case it's going to be this bytes m variable that we define up here, which will just be the mask length times the size of an integer. So it'll just be seven times four in this case or 28 bytes. All right. So we'll go ahead and this will simplify the arguments that we need for our kernel itself because we're no longer having to pass in a pointer to uh, said kernel. And we don't need to pass in uh, or rather, we don't need to pass in a pointer to the convolutional mask, and we also don't need to pass in a uh, you know the length of the mask. So other than that, the rest of the you know uh, the rest of the kernel stays exactly the same. When we're accessing the mask inside of this for loop, we do it the exact same way. So just as if it was you know, say a pointer that we passed in uh, to device memory inside of the uh, uh, the actual call to the kernel itself. Likewise, for constant memory, we access it the exact same way. So it's just mask, and then we index it using the J or the index of the for loop. And that's and that's really it. So this is the only change that we have to make. And we'll go ahead and run it. So we'll compile it first. So nvcc o convolution, convolution.cu. So 
first functionality check. All right, so we see it completed successfully. So we have a functional check, uh, which is an assert. And so we then hit the assert, or rather the assert didn't fail. So it says completed successfully. Now what we really care about is performance, right? So I made the claim that this is good for performance because we make sure that it's going to be in the constant cache and then we never have to go out to main memory. And then that's not interfering with the, you know, all the other accesses to main memory to get the values of the array, right? Uh, to get the convolutional mask. So let's go ahead and check the performance. So we'll call NV prof profiler or NV profiler dot slash convolution, right? So we see that it takes about 120 microseconds to run our kernel. So now let's see how long it takes to run the ex original example. So we'll go back to 1D naive and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and compile that example, right? So this was our naive kernel, right? So now we have, if we go ahead and open that up, we see that we have, uh, you know, we don't have this underscore underscore constant up here. So uh, we're passing in, you know, just in normal, uh, normal memory. Uh, that's where the mask is going to be stored. So let's go ahead and run this, profiling it as well. Uh, command line profiler, All right? And we'll run it again, and we see that you know this convolution kernel itself it took 270 microseconds. And again, this is compared to uh, convolution 1D right here that only took 120. Right, so it turns out that just by storing the mask in constant memory, uh, whenever it gets loaded in, loaded in to uh, uh, the constant cache, it gets repeatedly accessed in the constant cache, and we get a really good hit rate. And this really helps out um, from the performance side of things. Right, so we really, this is a really, really big improvement over the uh, over the original, you know, naive case. And so we can we see that you know in certain certain circumstances, if we go ahead and you know, utilize what's already there, so utilize things like constant memory, where it's appropriate, uh, these are things that we really have to keep in mind. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode, though. If you want to check out any of the other stuff that I'm doing, feel free to check me out on GitHub.com/coffeebeforearch. It's where I keep all of my uh, the code that I use in these examples. So in this case, we looked at CUDA programming, and let's see if it load quickly. All right, so it's over here where I keep all of my, uh, you know, all my other, uh, you know, short video series. So stuff on matrix multiplication, how to optimize matrix multiplication, some examples with vector addition. They say using unified uh, memory, uh, using some of the CUDA libraries, optimizing sum reduction, and then we'll have one up here for uh, convolution, optimizing convolution, as well as when we move into doing uh, 2D convolution and optimizing 2D convolution. So here we looked at 1D convolution with constant memory, All right? So here's our example for that. So feel free to download this and check this out and make sure to send me any questions if you have any. And as always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch and I hope you have a nice day.